Good evening, sir. Yeah, Mr. Pasca. Good evening, sir. Trust you have a lovely day. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. All right. Our class tonight shall progress. A quick recap of the topic we have treated on the online class. On my part, that is our Thursday class, our Thursday classes. We started with cost estimation. Then we move to price theory, pricing decision. From pricing decision, we started modern costing techniques. Under modern costing techniques, we have treated life cycle costing, target costing, and throughput accounting, and the theory of constraint. Tonight, we shall be looking at activity-based costing system. Our discussion tonight shall look at activity-based costing system. The activity-based costing system is one of the costing techniques under modern costing system. What is activity-based costing system? How do we apply this costing in business environments? Yeah. Activity based costing system. These costing techniques was developed to correct some of the deficiencies or to resolve the defects of the traditional absorption costing system. Let me repeat that point. Activity-based costing system is a modern costing system developed so as to correct the deficiency associated with the traditional absorption costing system. What is the traditional absorption costing system? is a costing system 
that determine the cost of a by considering both the marginal cost, by considering both the variable cost and the fixed cost. Both variable costs and fixed costs are included as part of cost of a product. Under this costing method, the problem is not the inclusion of fixed cost. The problem with conventional absorption is not because fixed cost is included as part of product cost. But the deficiency is how overheads are absorbed into product costs. What is overhead? Let us explain this briefly. If you cast our mind back to our costing techniques or to our cost accounting, if you try to cast our mind back to costing principles, cost can be categorized into two. Cost can be categorized into two. Or better still, there are several ways to classify cost. There are several ways to classify cost. One of the methods of cost classification is to classify cost into direct cost or indirect cost. One of the methods of classifying cost is to classify cost into direct or indirect cost. What is direct cost? Or what are direct cost? Direct cost are cost in killed and can be traced to a specific unit of a product. Direct cost are cost in killed and the cost can be traced to a particular product or service. For example, look at Nigerian Bottling Company. The Nigerian Bottling Company produces Coke, Sprite, and Fanta. Let us assume The company produces three products, Coca-Cola, Fanta, and Sprite. Any cost incurred that can be traced to a bottle of Coke, such cost will be classified as direct costs. Any cost in killed that can be traced to a bottle of Fanta. Such cost will be classified as direct cost. Any cost in killed that can be traced to a bottle of Sprite, that cost will be regarded as a direct cost. 
You can have direct material cost, direct labor cost, and direct expenses. The summation of these three costs is what we call prime cost. Addition of direct material cost, direct labor cost, direct expenses is referred to as prime cost. For direct cost, there is no accounting problem. For direct cost, there is no accounting problem. We can allocate this cost to the product concern. We now have indirect cost. Indirect costs are those costs in kill but cannot be traced to a specific product or service. Indirect costs are those costs incurred, but cannot be traced to a specific product or service. For example, rents. Look at Coca-Cola, the Nigerian bottling company. If they have rented a factory, in that factory, the company manufactures Coke, Sprite, and Fanta. That rent is incurred for all the products. The rent cannot be traced to a particular product. Such costs will be classified as indirect costs. Look at maintenance of the company's generator, fueling the gen. That generator will, serve, will service all the departments in the company. Whether pork departments, panther departments, sprite departments. The generator will service all the company. If you are now fueling the gen, the cost of fueling the gen cannot be traced to a particular product. That cost of fueling is indirect cost. We can have indirect material cost, indirect labor cost, indirect expenses. The summation of indirect material cost indirect labor cost, indirect expenses is referred to as overhead. Overhead costs are indirect costs. Now, the overhead cost cannot be traced to a product. Now, the question is, how do we account for this overhead cost? How do we share the overhead cost to the product produced? Because the overhead cost must be shared to all the product produced in the company. How do we distribute this overhead cost? That is the challenge now. Under the traditional absorption costing, overhead costs 
are absorbed using either machine hour or labor hours. Under the conventional absorption costing system, the overhead costs are absorbed on production volume measured by labor hours or machine hour. If you are absorbing overhead using labor hour or machine hour, the assumption is the overhead cost has happened as a result of machine hour or labor hour. That is the conventional absorption costing system. But in reality, several costs accounted for overhead. There are several costs that has cost that overhead cost. It will be wrong to use a single factor such as labor hour or machine hour to absorb overhead cost that happen as a result of several factors. That is what activity-based costing try to correct. The activity-based costing try to correct the deficiency of the conventional absorption costing system. Instead of absorbing overhead using a single factor, under the activity-based costing, we are going to identify the activities that has given rise to the overhead cost. And we are going to use these activities to absorb the overhead cost. Let me repeat that point. Under the activity-based costing, organization, we try to identify the various activities that has given rise to the overhead cost. These activities will be used to absorb the overhead cost, as opposed to using a single factor under the conventional absorption costing system. Outline of activity-based costing system. Look at the outline. One. Identify organization major activities. Activities that has contributed to the overhead cost. Step two, cost allocation and apportionment an apportionment method will be used to charge overhead cost to each activity. This we, are, we learned in foundation class. We are going to allocate overhead cost. We are going to apportion overhead cost to each activities in the organization. This will give us what we call the cost pool. For example, if you have labor activities, what are the overhead costs that arises or that arise as a result of labor activities? We are going to identify it. What are the overhead costs that occur 
as a result of machine hour. What are the overhead costs that occur as a result of purchases? We are going to identify this activity. And we are going to calculate what we call these activities is what we call cost drivers. These activities is what we refer to as cost drivers. Activities that drive cost. Factors that contribute to overhead cost. Once you are done with these activities and you have ascertained the overhead cost, you are going to calculate the overhead cost driver rate. That is, you are going to calculate absorption rates per unit of the cost driver. This is what we call overhead cost and the cost driver rates will be used to absorb overhead cost into production yeah charge overhead cost to product for each activity on the basis of their usage of the activity. That is the number of cost driver they use. These are the steps when dealing with activity-based cost, activity-based costing. There are several advantages. We can come back to when we get to question. There are questions that will ask us advantages of ABC. One is it can it can lead to a realistic product costing. And that can give rise to setting and setting an appropriate selling price. It enhances the tracing of overhead to a product. The activity-based costing system recognizes the complexity and diversity of modern production techniques. It also has its own limitation. How do we determine the cost driver? It's not very easy in practice. If you go to a, if you if you look at a typical organization, direct cost is not a problem. There are several costs will be incurred if you deliver product to a customer. How do you, the overhead cost generated, how do we deal with it? If you look at stores, stores will service several departments. That cost cannot be traced to a particular department. How do we determine the cost driver rate? It's not very easy in practice. But the accountant must exercise professional judgment. All right. We are done with the explanation of the principles. Any question before we look at 
question related to this. Any question, please? All right. If there is no question, let us review question number one under activity based costing. If the concept is well understood, you can deal with question easily. Now look at this question. Subject. Nigerian Limited assembles three types of motorcycle in the same factory. The 50cc prelude, the 100cc Roadmaster, 150cc Roadstar. This company manufactures three motorcycles. Prelude, Roadmaster, and Roadstar. It sells the motorcycles throughout the West Africa, West African coast. In response to market pressure, the SADEC has invested heavily in new manufacturing technology in recent years. And as a result, has significantly reduced the size of its workforce. That means labor has reduced. We have introduced technology. Historically, the company has allocated all overhead cost using total direct labor hours. But it is now considering introducing activity-based costing. That means before, the company allocates overhead using direct labor hours. And since the workforce has reduced, the production is now technologically driven. Okay. Sadex accounting has produced the following. The following analysis, types of motorcycle, annual output in units, annual direct labor hour to produce prelude, roadmaster, and roadsters, selling price per unit, raw material cost per unit. The raw material cost can be traced to a unit. That is direct cost. The three cost driver is the three cost driver that generates overhead are one deliveries to retailer. That is the number of deliveries to retail showroom. That means Overhead cost arises as a result of three things. Delivery to retailers, set up the number of times the assembly process is reset to accommodate production run of a different types of 
motorcycle chase order, normal of purchase order. The examiner says three things contributed to the overhead cost. Deliveries, setup cost, purchase order cost. If you look at all these costs, none of this is related to labor hour. The annual cost driver volume relating to each activity and each type of motorcycle. Look at it. If you talk of deliveries, we have 200 delivery for prelude, 160 delivery for roadmaster, 140 deliveries for road staff. If you talk of setup, 70 setup for prelude, 80 setup for roadmaster, 50 setup for road star. If you talk of number of purchases, purchases order for prelude, 400, 300 for road star. 100 for road, 300 for road master, 100 for road star. Annual overhead relating to the activities. This is in thousand place. A three zero here. For delivery, we have 24,000. Naira overhead cost. For setup, 60,000. For purchase order, 36,000. Direct labor is paid 50 Naira per hour. The company owes no inventory. Requirements A. Calculate the total profits on each of the SADEC three types of products using the following methods to absorb overhead. Roma figure one. A Roma figure one using the existing method based upon labor hour. A Roma figure two, using activity-based costing. Now the question has been given to us. It is not impossible that you are going to deal with 20 mass questions on this topic, this diet. Why? Because it's been a while. It's not impossible that you might Nobody knows the question that will be texted. But it's not impossible that you might deal with 20 mass question from this environment. Now, before we go to the solution, is there any aspect of the question that is not clear? Is there any aspect of this question that is not clear, please? We want to calculate the profits. For Aroma Figure 1, we are going to calculate profits using the traditional absorption costing method 
overhead will be absorbed using labor hour. For a Roma figure two, this should be Roma figure one. This should be your A. It should be A1, or this one is an error. To have been. Yeah. Then this should be your B. Let us move to the solution. Let's go to our working fixed. For the A parts, first start with your direct cost. Any cost that can be traced to the product, like the material cost. Look at it, please. Material cost per unit, 4,000 Naira. Multiply by the number of units produced. Can you see it? Let's go to that working. Please get your calculator and let's work together. Look at the material cost for prelude. The company produced 5,000 units. Material cost per unit, 4,000. Total amount, 20 million. For Roadmaster, the company produced 4,000 units. Material cost per unit, 6,000. That gives us 24 million. For Roadster, the company produced 1,400. Material per Roadster, 9,000. Get your figure. I'm sure that is direct. For labor cost, Look at the labor cost. For prelude, we use 500,000 labor hour. Look at the labor hour. Five hundred thousand, five fifty thousand, two hundred thousand, and we are told that. Labor rate per hour. Labor direct labor is paid fifty naira per hour. Please multiply. Look at working one. Five hundred thousand multiplied by fifty. Twenty five million. Five fifty multiplied by fifty. Twenty seven point five million. 200 multiplied by 50, 10 million. These are direct costs. You can take them to your working. These are your direct costs. Look at this. Direct labor cost, 27.5, 10 million. Material cost, 20, 24, 12.6. We have gotten all the direct cost. We now come to overhead cost. Overhead cost must be absorbed to the product. 
please sum. What is the total overhead cost? Addition of these three, please add. 24 million plus 60 million. That should give us 84 million plus 36 million. What do you have, please? What do you have, please? 120. One what? 120 million. Now, working three, over eight cost per labor hour. Under the, thank you, Gabriel. Under the existing method, the conventional absorption costing method, overhead cost is absorbed using direct labor hour. Then you must compute the overhead absorption rates. You must calculate overhead absorption rate per labor hour. How do we compute this? Sum your overhead cost, the total overhead cost, 120 million, divided by the total labor hours. That means overhead is absorbed using a single factor, and the factor is labor hour. This is under the traditional words, the traditional method. So calculate your overhead absorption rates. Total overhead cost divided by the total, total labor hour. 96 per labor hour. You must put per labor hour. That means overhead cost will be at the rate of 96 naira per labor hour. Overhead cost will be absorbed at the rate of 96 naira per labor hour. We can now come here. Please remember, labor hour for prelude. 500,000. 500,000. So if I'm going, if I want to say overhead for prelude, prelude, overhead absorbed, prelude overhead absorbed is equal to total hour for prelude, 500,000 hours. Multiply by 96 naira per labor hour. Please multiply and get your figure. 48. 48 million. Okay, keep in view, no problem. If I want to talk of over S for road, road master. Is equal to total overhead for road mass five five multiplied by ninety six. What do you have, please? This is equal to forty eight million fifty two eight hundred fifty two eight hundred. This is equal to 52,800. Yeah. Therefore, Roadstar Star. 
We have 200 labor hours, 200,000 labor hours. Multiply by 96 naira. What do you have, please? 19,200. 19 million 200. If you add up, if you add up, you are going, we have shared the overhead based on labor hours. If you want to add this thing now, it will give you 120,000 baht. Check it out. 48 million plus 52,800 plus 19,200. It's going to give you 120 million baht. Very correct, sir. The overhead has been shared to the three products. Using what? Labor hour. Is that clear, sir? The overhead has been shared to the three products using labor hour. Look at it now. Forty eight million fifty two eight hundred nineteen two hundred. You can now add all your cost for each product. Add your cost for prelude, add for roadmaster, add obtain total cost per products. Obtain total cost per products. Have you confirmed that? Are we good with the cost? Just one minute. I'm sure we have confirmed the cost. Total for prelude, 93 million. For Roadmaster, 104, 300,000. For Roadstar, 41, 800,000. Examiner says calculate profit for each product. Depending on the approach you want to take. I've gotten total cost. I can get total revenue and get a move on. I can also do like this. What is cost per unit? This is the total cost of 5,000 units. For prelude, we have produced 5,000. Total cost is 93 million. What is cost per unit? 93,000 or 93 million divided by 5,000 units. The cost per unit is given here. For prelude. Cost per unit is 18,600. For Roadmaster, total cost 104,300. 
divided by four now. Or you do 104, 300,000, divided by 4,000 units. The cost per unit of Roadmaster is 26,075. Get cost per unit for Roadstar. The total 41 million 800 divided by 1,400. Cost per unit is 29,857. I've gotten cost per unit to produce a prelude motorcycle. It's going to cost the company 18,600 to produce a Roadmaster motorcycle is going to cost the company 26,075 Naira. To produce a Roadstar, it's costing the company 29,857. Then I will pick selling price per unit. This is given in the question. Look at the question, please. Selling price, selling price, 25, 30, 40. I've gotten selling price per unit. I've gotten cost per unit. I can calculate profit per unit. 25,000 minus 18,600. That will give me 6,400. Thirty thousand selling price minus twenty six thousand and seventy five. That will give me three thousand nine twenty five. Forty thousand prelude selling price minus twenty nine eight five seven. That will give me a profit per unit of ten thousand one forty three. That means technically, Rosta generates higher, the highest profit per unit. I can now get total profit per, total profit per product. This is profit per unit, Abby, per roster. If we have produced and sold 5,000, what is the total profit from prelude? 6,400 multiplied by 5,000. That becomes 32 million. You can check it out. 6,400 multiplied by 5,000. That will give you 32 million. Next, for Roadmaster, profit per unit is 3,925. And the company produced and 4,000 units multiplied by 3,925. That will give you 15 million 700. Then for Roadstar, 10,143 multiplied by 1,400, that will give us 14 million, 200,200 naira. You can now sum up the total profits if the company used, if the company used the traditional absorption costing method the traditional absorption cost is 60. Please addition, 32 million plus 15, 700 plus 14, 200, 200, 200. 
we have 60, 61 million 900 and 200. That is the total profits using the existing method. The existing method is the traditional absorption costing method. I'm sure, okay, I'm not sure Juan started this with you. Any question, please? Any question, please? Sir, I have one question, sir. Okay, who is speaking? Samuel, sir. My name is Samuel, sir. Please go ahead. Sir, my question is, can we use um another method? Instead of, you know now, you converted everything to units. Can we make use of, like, the sales value now? Make, make use of value. Like, for instance, now, it should not be like the normal sales minus uh, variable cost. They will now convert it that sales, the selling price per unit times Hold output. Hold on, nothing like variable everything. cost here. Okay. We are not doing marginal costing method. Is that clear, sir? Yes, sir. You know why I post you quickly? When you say variable cost. Yes. We are not using marginal costing method here. We are using absorption costing method. Okay. And how, how do we do it? We don't distinguish between variable cost and fixed cost. I've never said one is variable or fixed. So you can continue your question from there again now. Oh, all right, sir. So what I'm trying to say now is that if, you know, instead of, Using selling price per unit. Can we make it of value? That is from yes, the beginning. You can do it. You can do it. Yeah. You can now get total sales revenue, Abby. Yes, exactly. That so, exactly, becomes so. 25,000 multiplied by the number of units, Abby. Yes, Please sir. multiply yes. 25,000. 5,000. What do you have? Yes, Sammy, what do you have? I'm with 25,000 times 5,000, right? And what do you have? What is the, what is the total revenue? Sales value? 125, $125 million, sir. Now, 125 million minus 93 million total cost. What do you have? That's 32 million, sir. You are still going to get your profit. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can adopt that approach. But you cannot ask me, why do we take it to individual cost, unit cost? Is to help our explanation in B parts. Is that clear? You can, uh, you can get your sales value. Then your sales value will give you 125 million. Then from your sales value, less the total cost, 93 million. You are going to get profit, no problem. But when you now get to your report writing, you are going to require cost per unit for explanation. You are going to require selling price per unit for explanation. Is that clear, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's clear now. You can still use your normal when you get your total cost here. You no, know, we have gotten total cost here, have we? Then get your sales value. Your sales value is quantity sold multiplied by selling price per unit. Then you get your profit normally. No problem. But when you get to the reports, 
you are going to require cost per unit, same price per unit for explanation. So what we what we have done here is to prepare for the report we are going to write in B part. Any other question? All right, we move to the A Roma figure two. We now want to use activity-based costing. Please note, the activity-based costing will only affect the overhead. The labor cost, direct labor cost, remain unaffected because this cost can be traced to a specific product. This is the labor cost for prelude, 25 million. Labor cost for Roadmaster, 37.5 million. Labor cost for Roadster, 10 million. This will not change. Material cost for prelude, 20, 20 million. Material cost for Roadmaster, 24 million. Material cost for Roadster, 12.6 million. This will not be affected. It is only the overhead cost that we now change. Look at the overhead cost now. We need to now go to our working. We are going to treat the overhead individually now. Activities have been identified. There are three activities that gave rise to overhead costs. Examiner, examiner has explained that to us. Look at it. He said three activities. Delivery to retailers, set-up cost, purchase other cost. These are the activities that give rise to overhead costs. You are now going to calculate cost driver rates for each activity. You are going to calculate cost driver rates for each activity. How do we do that? Total overhead cost of deliveries divided by the total number of deliveries. We are going to now pick it individually. What is the total overhead cost of delivery? Let's look at it. 24 million. This is the overhead cost related to deliveries to retailers. And what has given right to this cost? Number of times we deliver to customer. Please sum up your deliveries. 200 plus 160 plus 140. That should give us 500 deliveries. 500 deliveries has led to 24 million Naira. What is the overhead cost per delivery? Are clear, please. We now come here. Look at it, please. Twenty four million divided by total number of delivery five hundred. That will give you. 48,000 is important. For what delivery?
That is the cost driver rate per delivery. Is that clear, please? Next, you go to overhead cost of setup. Overhead cost of setup divided by total number of setups. Let's check it. The overhead cost of setup is 60 million naira. The number of setup, look at it. 70 plus 80 plus 50. That should be 200 setup. 200 setup as less million setup cost. Calculates cost driver rate per setup. Look at it, please. 60 million divided by 200. This is 300,000 per setup. Per setup. If there's any question, let's feel free to ask. Next. Overhead cost of purchase order divided by total number of purchases. If you look at this, none of this is related to labor hour. That means our computation in A, there are some deficiency in the allocation of cost. We have allocated the cost using we have allocated the overhead cost using labor hours. And in reality, labor hours is not the cost of this cost. Look at this now. The total purchase order cost, 36 million. Number of purchase order, we can add up. Look at this, 400, 300, 100, that's 800. 36 million divided by 800. That gave us 45 naira per purchase order. Okay, that shifted this. Um, don't worry, this is it. Our order. What we have done is for cost driver rates. When you are done, when you are done with your cost driver rates, you now come to the overhead. Deliveries over eight. Prelude. We have 200 deliveries. Look at it. 48,000 per deliveries. Per delivery. And we have done 200 delivery for prelude. 48,000 Naira multiplied by 200. That means for prelude, we are going to allocate 9,600 of prelude. For Roadmaster, we have done 160 delivery. Multiply by delivery cost per delivery, 48,000. That gives us 7,680. Sorry, 7,680,000. For Roadmaster, we have done 140. For Roadstar, we have done 140 delivery. Multiply by 48,000 Naira. That will give us 6,720. If you sum up this now, it's going to give you 24 million Naira. The total overhead cost of delivery. If you sum up this, check it out. Please sum it up. 
you are going to have 24 million. When you are done with delivery, move to setup. Per setup is 300,000. And we have done 70 setup for prelude. 300 multiplied by 70, 21 million. For Roadmaster, we have done 80 setups multiplied by cost per setup. 300 multiplied by 80, that's 24 million. For Roadstar, we have done 50 setup. Multiply by the setup cost per setup. That give us 15 million. If you sum up this, it will give you 60 million, which is the overhead for our setup. Then we move to purchase order overhead. Per order is 45,000 Naira. How many purchase order for prelude? 400. Multiply by 45,000 per order. That will give you 18 million. Roadmaster, we have 300 purchases of purchase orders. Multiply by 45,000. That will give you 13.5 million. For roster, we have 100 purchase order. Multiply by 45,000 Naira. That will give us 4.5. If you sum up this, you are going to have 36 million. You can now take this to your working now. Prelude, pick up your figures carefully. Look at it. For delivery, 9.6 9 for prelude, 7,860 7, for road master, 6,720 for road star, Setup cost, 21 million for prelude, 24 million. Roadmaster, 15 million. Roadster, purchase order overhead, 18 million for prelude, 13.5. Roadmaster, 4.5 roster. You can now add all your costs. From direct costs, add all your costs. Labor material add all your overhead please check this out for prelude the total cost is 93600 for roadmaster total cost 96860 or 680 for roadster total cost 48 820. We have used the activities to absorb the overhead. We didn't use just single factor labor hour. Is that clear, please? You have gotten your total cost. Like, like someone asks. You can get your total revenue and get your profit. You have gotten total cost for each product. You can get total revenue for each product and get your profit. 
But why are we doing this analysis? It's because we are going to write report. And we are going, we might require cost per unit. Look at this now. The cost per unit for prelude, 93,600,000 divided by 500, by 5,000 units. That gave us 18,720. Cost per unit for Roadmaster, 96,680 divided by 4,000. 24,170. 24, Cost per units for roll star, 48,820,000 divided by 1,400. 1, this is 34,871. You observe that there is now change. Selling price per unit. For road, for prelude, 25,000, that will not change. For roadmaster, 30,000. For roadster, 40,000. You can now get profit per unit. Our profit per unit for prelude, 25,000 minus 18,720, that is 6,820. 6,280. For Roadmaster, selling price 30,000 minus 24,170. That is 5,830. And for Roadstar, 40,000 minus 34,871. The profit per unit, 5,129. That means in reality, Roadster is not giving higher profit. We have, we have, we have done for, how do I put this? We have run product costing. By using just labor hours, we have created what we call wrong product costing. It means that prelude is giving more profit if we use the activities that give rise to cost. You can now calculate total profit per product on 280 multiplied by number of units, 5,000 units. That will give you 31,400. Next. 5,830 multiplied by number of units produced and sold, 4,000 units, 23 million, 320,000. Roadster, 5,129 profit per unit, multiplied by number of units produced and sold, 1,400. That will give you seven and eighty. Look at the total profits, sixty one nine hundred six hundred. What has happened? Sixty one nine hundred two hundred. Please, can you check where this is hundred coming from? Please, help, help me check where this is hundred coming from. I have. I think it's an error. There's no 600 in the total profit for each product. No and do your multiplication now 6,280. Is correct. 
4,000 multiply by 5830. This is correct also. The last one, 520 multiplied by 1004. Uh huh. There should be six hundred here. Yeah. We have we are done with. Aroma figure two. Now you can now ask ourselves activity based costing has led to improvement in the profits by a difference of 400. And this is the argument of some of the, some of the school of thoughts that if activity base is taken into consideration, it can lead to efficient costing and improvement in, in company's profits. Any question, please? Any question, please? All right, there's no question. Let us look at, like I said, once you understand the principle, you can deal with any question here. Write a report to the director, to the director of SADEP as a management accountant, evaluating the hours and the activity-based costing method in the circumstances of SADEC. Refer to your, to your question in requirements one above where appropriate. It should be referred to your solution in one above now. Now, before we go to the report, what have you observed? Let's let's assume that we have what have what have we observed now? Let's compare. Report is always there for us to, to read now. What have you observed? Year cost eighteen thousand six hundred. We have, look at this. Road Star has been grossly on the cost of Road Star has been grossly stated. 29,000 compared to 34,000. If time, if if care is not taken, we can we can we can set run selling price for roaster because we believe that the cost is just twenty nine thousand. Meanwhile, the cost is thirty four thousand plus.
we have overstated the cost of Roadmaster. Recall in, in determining your in to determine your selling price, you are also going to look at the cost of production. If you if you have inappropriate or incorrect product cost, that can affect your selling price. Remember, you are not the only one selling that product in the market. Now look at the reports. It's coming from your decks now. The use of labor hours for allocation of overhead is only appropriate where there is a direct relationship between overhead and labor hour. This does not appear to be so for Sadek as painted in the scenario. The traditional method of cost allocation, such as the one based on labor hours, was developed when manufacturing operations were simple and products went through similar pro operations. What we are saying is, the labor hours we were using was when we have our production driven by labor. But now the company has introduced technology. The company has reduced labor force, workforce. Also, this method was being widely used when overhead costs were only a small proportion of total cost, where direct labor and material costs accounted for significant proportion of total cost. It seems that SADEC has invested in new technology, and as a result, the labor size has been reduced significantly. Direct labor cost now account for a relatively small proportion of total cost. Why overhead cost makes up make up the highest single item. Allocation of overhead on the basis of labor cost or labor hour would tend to allocate a greater proportion of overhead to the higher volume. Look at prelude now. Prelude is using 500,000 labor hour. Roadmaster is using 550 labor hour. Roadster uses 200,000 labor hour. You observe that we have, we have distributed low labor hour cost to, ro to Roadster. Because the hours is just 200,000 compared to Prelude and Roadmaster. So what we are saying is, we try to explain the limitation of the existing method. That that method has been overtaken by the introduction of technology to the business. Labor force has been reduced. The production process is now driven by technology. If you go to activity-based costing, is an attempt to overcome the problem highlighted earlier. Identifying the factors that drive cost of an organization. 
of an organization major activity. Behind activity based costing is that activities such as ordering, material handling, delivery setup, etc., cost, drive cost. This activity drive cost, ordering cost, drive cost, delivering cost, setup cost. Costs are therefore assigned to product on the basis of the product consumption of such activity. We are going to allocate costs on the basis of activities that has given right to the cost and the number of consumption by each product. It is also argued by the proponent of the activity-based costing that it is activity that generates cost, not labor hour. The accuracy of any activity-based costing system will depend on the appropriateness of the activities as the cost driver. Hello. Please, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, I've been having challenges with my my major device, but I have, I'm trying to see if I can if I can use alternative device to to complete the class. Let me see if I can. Just one minute, if I can assess. Okay, can you see my can you see my screen being shared? Hello, guys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's try and manage it. Let's try and manage it. So, okay, just one minute. That's. Never work with impossibility. I didn't plan for this at all. I didn't even like. Yeah. <laughs> but how do we not stop now? We have come. Uh, you know. So what we are explaining is, I wish to move to that aspect of that report. If I can move it. Uh, let me see. Um, next page. Um, okay, just one. Uh, be able to move. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh God, have mercy. Yeah. Okay. Ah, at that institution will make you to learn new things. <laughs> I'm used to my. Oh God, have mercy. Okay, I think we are there. Right? Yeah, look at the reports. Yeah, this is the part of the report. Okay, great. All right, let's try to round up. Activity-based costing is an attempt to overcome the problem highlighted earlier. by identifying the factors that drive costs, that drive the cost of an organization major activity. 
The idea behind activity-based costing is that activities such as ordering, material handling, deliveries, set up, etc., drive costs. Costs are therefore assigned to products. On the basis of the product consumption of such activities, it is also argued by the proponents of activity based costing that it is the activities that generate costs, not labor hours. The accuracy of any activity based costing system we depend on the appropriateness of the activities as cost driver. Each activity, sorry, each cost driver selected should be appropriate to the overhead to which it relates. There should be a direct and um, proportionate relationship between the relevant overhead costs and the cost driver selected. The labor hour overhead cost allocation system and activity-based costing result in different profit figures. Let's look at that aspect. The profit per unit of roster significantly reduces from 10,000, hey, look at it, somewhere. Now, look at the importance of having your figures per unit. I'm not saying you cannot do total, but when you are, when you are doing your reports, you are going to need units to explain. Now, look at the last aspect of that, or the second paragraph, the profit per unit of roster significantly reduced from 10,143 naira to 5,290. Why that of prelude increase from 6,400 to 6,480 per unit? The reason for this is that although roster uses more labor hour per unit than prelude, is that true? Roster uses, yes, roster uses 200,000 labor hours. Why prelude uses 500,000 labor hours? Roster uses 50% of labor hour per unit than prelude. It's low output volume of 1,000 units compared to 5,000 units of prelude, means that proportionately, low amount of over a year, overhead absorbed, let me summarize that. Overhead absorbed to roster is lower because number of units produced is lower. Even though It has more labor hour, or it has other things costing cost for it. But because we have produced just 1,400, overhead allocated to roster becomes lower. Because overhead was absorbed on volume, labor hour. The volume produced for roster is lower. 
why the volume produced for prelude is higher. Hence, we have allocated more overhead to prelude than the overhead allocated to roster. But in reality, in, in reality, if you use the activities that give rise to the overhead cost, more overhead should have been allocated to roster. That was what happened in Aromatigo 2. The summary of this report is by using the first method, we allocate overhead using production volume. It means that we produce 5,000 prelude. We produce 4,000 roadmaster. We produce 1,400 roadster. Because we are using production volume based on our prelude, we get more overhead cost. And that will reduce the profit of prelude. Roadster we get less overhead cost because it's volume driven. That will increase the profit of roster. But if we introduce the activities that give rise to the cost, that will lead to appropriate product costing. Activity-based costing will lead to correct product costing. Hence, it's going to give us appropriate profit per unit. You can close your report. Any question, please? Now look at question number two. Although solution is not provided, it was deliberate. It was deliberate. Let's take reading of this question. My plan, my plan is that we are going to solve this question in the classroom together. That was my plan. Look at this question. Kate Peters. Limited manufactures and set components used in the computer warehouse industry. The company currently charges overhead to products using a plant wide rate based on direct labor. Hour. Please underline. We are solving this question together notwithstanding the limitation. Please underline. The company currently charges overhead to products using a plant-wide rate based on direct labor hours. This method was introduced in 2008 when the company was established. And when the company only produced one product. Since 2008, the company has indexed heavily in advanced manufacturing technologies and increased their product range. Kate Peters Limited operates in a very competitive market. And due to current economic condition, they are coming under increase, increasing pressure by, by their customer to reduce their prices. 
the company are considering the introduction of activity-based costing system and has provided the following information in relation to their yeah. three products. Yeah. Product A. Stop eating this Look night. at product A. I don't know what happened. Uh, we speaking, you know. I don't make a wake up. I will let you never know. Our give me a big, give me a big. Anthony, you are conflicting my class. Yes, sorry, I'm trying to concentrate. Thank you. All right, the company are considering the introduction of activity-based costing system and has provided the following information in relation to their three products. Direct material cost per unit for products A, products B, products C. Direct labor hour per unit, direct labor hours per unit. To produce a unit of product A, 10 hours. Product B, 8 hours. Product C, 9 hours. Machine hours per unit, 4 hours, 6 hours, 3 hours. Production and sales in units. 10,000 units of A, 4,000 units of B, and 6,000 units of C. Direct labor is paid 140 naira per hour. Please note that. The company calculates selling prices by applying a markup on 25% of cost. On cost, 25%. Details of overhead of Kate Limited as follows. Let's look at it. Machine related cost, 2 million, 460,000. Setup cost, 1.8 million. Delivery cost, 680,000. Quality related, quality related cost. Six forty thousand. For our information relating to all three products is given below. Number of setup, number of deliveries, number of inspection. Of course, setup is for setup cost. Delivery is for delivery cost. Is let me say quality. That means we are going to inspect it. By time by time we inspect, we are going to know the quality of the products. Number of inspection required. Calculate the unit production cost and unit profit using the Traditional approach. Traditional approach. B, calculate unit production cost and unit profit based on activity. Identify three reasons why Kate Peters Limited implements activity base. All right, guys, let us deal with this together. Open your sheets. Let's start solution. Let us have interactive class with this question. Yes. Let's see it. Now open your sheets. Calculation of unit production cost and unit profit using the traditional absorption costing method. 
open your open your solution sheet a calculation of unit production cost and unit profit using the traditional absorption costing method are we done with that let me know if you are done Okay, extra confirm that we are fine. Next, your product. Create a column product. For your product, you are going to have A, B, C. That means a roll, A, B, C. You can open, you can open you can draw a what we call column and row. So you have this product A, product B, product C. If you are done, let me know. Let's deal with it together. Yes, let's see how it goes. All right, good. Be able to confirm that. Now, let's take material cost per unit. What is the material cost per unit? Material A, 1,000 Naira. Material B, 1,200 Naira. Material C, 1,500. When you are done, let me know. Next, let us go to direct labor cost per unit. Direct labor cost per unit. State it in your book. Direct labor cost per unit. All right, let's go to it. Please note, to produce a unit of product A, we require 10 labor hours. Can we see it? Can we all see it? Can we all see it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We require 10 labor hours. Now come here. Direct labor is paid 140 Naira per hour. So 10 multiplied by 140. That becomes direct labor cost per unit for product A. That should give you 1,400, Abby. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Product A, direct labor cost per unit, 1,400. Go to product B, eight hours, multiply by 140 per hour. Eight hours multiplied by 140 per hour. What do you have? 1120. 1,120, Abby. Is that what you are confirming? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That becomes under product B, 1,120 labor cost per unit. For product C, nine labor hours multiplied by 140. 
1,260. Please put it there. So we have gotten material cost per unit. We have gotten labor cost per unit. We now want to do overhead cost per unit. We are using the traditional absorption method. And examiner says, using a plant-wide rate based on what? Direct labor hour. So we need to calculate overhead absorption rate per labor hour. We need to calculate overhead absorption rate per labor hour. Please put it here. Calculate working one. So you can leave your solution A, go to working one. Working one. Calculation of overhead absorption rate per labor hour. Calculation of overhead absorption rate per labor hour. Are we there? Esther Biodun? Yes, sir. Now, this is e equal to total overhead cost, overhead absorption per labor hour is equal to total overhead cost divided by total labor hour. Overhead absorption rate per labor hour is equal to the total overhead cost divided by the total labor hours. Are we done with that? Are we done with that? Yes, sir. So let's go. Total overhead cost. Please sum. Total overhead, 2,460,000 plus 1.8 million plus 680,000 plus 640. Please add all the individual overhead costs to get total overhead. Please add all the individual overhead costs. What do you have, please? Five million five hundred eighty thousand. Five million five eighty thousand. Okay, keep it. Now let's get total labor hour. Now look at it. Total labor hour. To produce a unit of product A, labor hour will require 10, 10 labor hour B. Can we all see it? Yes, sir. Now, and we are going to produce 10,000 units of A. 10 multiplied by 10,000. That becomes labor hours for product A. 10 hours multiplied by 10,000 units. That becomes labor hour for product A. What do you have? 100,000. 100, 100, Keep it. Labor hour for product B. Eight hours by 4,000. That should be how many? 32,000 labor hour, Abby. For products, B, eight hours per labor per unit 
and we are going to produce 4,000 units. What do we have? 32, Abby? Yes, sir. Okay. Go to product C. Nine hours to produce a unit. Labor hours. And we are going to produce 6,000. Nine hours multiplied by 6,000. What do you have? For product C. What do you have? 54,000. 54,000 labor hours. Now add it. 100,000 for product A. 2,000 for product B. 54,000 for product C. Get total labor hours. 100 plus 32 plus 54. What do you have? 186,000. 186,000 labor hours. So calculate overhead absorption rate per labor hour. 5 million. What do you, five, your overhead, overhead cost? 5 million and what? 5 million 580,000. 5 million 580,000 divided by 186,000 labor hour. What do you have? 30. What do you have? 30. 30. 30, yes. 30. Okay. That becomes 30 naira per labor hour. Please put it in your book. The overhead absorption rate per labor hour is 30 naira per labor hour. Are we there now? Yes, sir. Now, working yes. two. Overhead cost per unit. Working two overhead cost per unit. For product A, we are going to use 10 hours. And the rate per labor hour is 30 naira per labor hour, Abby. The rate we calculated. Yes, sir. Yes. So 10 hour for product A multiplied by 30 naira. What do you have? Three hundred. Three hundred. That means that means the overhead cost per unit for product A is three hundred naira. That means the overhead cost per unit of product A is three hundred naira. Thirty naira per hour multiplied by ten thousand multiplied by ten hours. Per unit of product A. To produce one unit of product A is 10 hours. 10, 10, 10 labor hours. And the overhead rate per labor hour is 30 naira. That becomes 10 hours multiplied by 30 naira per hour. That becomes 300 naira per unit. You cannot take it to your, your solution one. Overhead cost per unit for product A, 300 naira. That will be under product A now. Yes. For product B, we are going to use eight hours of labor multiplied by 30 naira per labor hour. What do you have? 240. So under product B, you are going to put two, your overhead cost per unit, 240 naira. When you are done, move to product C. Product C will require nine labor hours. Multiply by 30 naira per labor hour. 270. So under product C, you are going to put 270 Naira. When you are done, you cannot get, you cannot add your cost now. 
material cost for A, 1,000. Labor cost for A, 1,400. Overhead cost for A, 300. Please add 1,000 plus 1,400 plus 300. What do you have? 2,700. That ah. is product A. That is the cost per unit of product A. Unit production cost. Go to B, add material, labor, and overhead. Add 1,200, 1,120, plus 240. What do you have? 2,560. You are done for B. Then go to C, add. 1,500 for material, plus your labor cost, plus the overhead cost. What do you have? 3,000. 3,000? 30 Naira. 30 Naira. 30 Naira. Okay. We have resolved. Okay, we have gotten cost per unit. The question says, calculate unit production cost. You have done that. And unit profits. So you have gotten production cost per unit mm -hmm. for product A, product B, product C. What is the selling price per unit? You cannot get profit per unit. Are we giving? Yeah. We should be giving. <laughs> oh, okay, look at it. The company calculates selling price by applying a markup of what? On cost of how much? 25%. It's even easier. Your profit is 25% of cost. So for the product A, what is cost per unit? You have how much? 2,700. Now, your profit is 25% of 2,700. Please calculate. 675, Naira. 675. 675, Abby? Yes, sir. That profit will now be added to the cost to get selling price. 2,700 plus 675 equals selling price. What do you have? 3,375 Naira. Thank you. You have gotten the profit by unit. For product A, cost by unit, that is unit production cost, 2,700. Unit profit, 675 Naira, profit per unit. Unit selling price, 3,000, the figure you have just caught. You have resolved product A. Go to product B. What is your cost per unit? Two thousand five sixty. Two thousand five sixty. Now your profit is twenty five percent of two thousand five sixty. Six forty. Six forty. Six forty. Forty. Six forty. That is unit profit. Then your selling price is equal to cost plus. The profit, selling price per unit. 3,200. Great. Go to product C. Your unit cost is 3,030, Abby? Yes, sir. 
Calculate 25%. That is your profit on cost. 757.5. 757.5. Then you can get your selling price. Three thousand seven eighty seven point five. All right. Thank you guys for your cooperation in spite of the limitation. Now we still have we have the B part, Abby. Yes, sir. The B part says calculate unit production cost and unit profit based on activity based cost. Now, within five minutes, we can't finish this. What do you need to do? You go to your B, open the product, product A, B, C. Direct material cost will not change. Direct labor cost will not change. Only the overhead cost per unit will change. So you are going to pick direct material cost, 1,000 for product A, 1,200 for product B, 1,500 for product C. You pick your labor cost per unit. For product A, 1,400. Product B, 1,120. Product C, what do you have there? Say 1,000 what? 1,260. 1,260. You now go to the overhead. The overhead will now change. You are now going to use individual cost driver now. Now look at machine-related cost. That means machine-related cost, we are going to use machine hour. Setup cost, we are going to use number of setup. Delivery cost, we are going to use number of delivery. Quality related cost, we are going to use number of inspection. So let us take this as a take home assignment, challenge it, and provide solutions. But please, I want solution before the next class. We are not coming back to this. So, aha. Uh -huh. So between now and Tuesday, send in your solution. All right. Any question? Sir, a uh, quick one, sir. That machine hour. So we, it will form the part of our cost using the traditional method. No, 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 no. Machine hour. Okay, as in, we didn't do direct machine hour cost. Have we? Yes. Is that what you are saying? Yes. Is that what you are saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The machine hour is woman being that operate the machine now. That, and we have paid woman being on that level. Should we pay them for machine again? Do you understand it? Yes, I understand. Yeah. You know that that machine is operated by woman being? Yes. That machine will work for four hours. Yeah. Do you understand? Woman yes. being now operates the machine. We are going to pay the woman being. Yeah. Do you understand? That machine cost is machine cost now. It's now not it's now not like labor cost. It might be cost of fueling, but yes. do you understand? It's now overhead. Yes. I hope it's clear. Yes, yes, yes. I understand now, sir. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Understand. Thank you, sir. All right. Any other question? 
All right, thank you for your cooperation. In spite of the glitch, I was worried that I'm going to lose one hour, but I now realize that at times difficulties or challenges will come. It will make you to learn new things. All right, let's have a blessed evening. God will give us a better understanding. Amen. Good night. Good night, sir. Thank, Thank you, you very much, sir. Good night. Yeah. Mm -hmm.